join me for a week to see what we are having for dinner and what are the things that we're doing. Welcome to Harvest Moon Farm. My name is Mickey, if this is your first time visiting my channel. And so today we are just going to go through a week of our time and see what sorts of things we have for dinner on a regular basis. So I have some potatoes here that I'm just cutting in small pieces. I'm just going to boil them and we're just going to smash them with our fork and have them with our dinner. And I believe these are some of the potatoes that we got out of the garden. We didn't get a whole lot, or they might be some that some of our neighbors gave us. I don't remember now. Um, but I cut up, I don't know, maybe four or five for my husband and I, which ended up being way too many. But I've got those going, and now I've got a cast iron skillet, and I'm just putting some olive oil in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I have some flavored olive oil. One is garlic and one is lemon, and I was trying to figure out which one I was putting in. Add a little bit of salt to our potato water, and then here I've got two pieces of the chicken that we flattened and breaded a few weeks ago when I had some grandkids here helping me. These have been such a great thing to have on hand it's so nice to just pull a packet out of the freezer, let them thaw, and then I can fry them up and cook them with whatever I want. So this is a package of um, some lettuce from our garden that I had already washed and then wrapped in a paper towel. So there were a few pieces in there that were not looking too hot. So I pulled those out. And then I'm just going to rough chop this and just make a basic salad. I have one of our last tomatoes over there beside me that I'm going to cut up and add to this salad as well. And then by the time we threw a few croutons on top of there and our dressing, it was delicious, nice, fresh garden tastes. Now that I've got our salad done, the chicken is ready to flip over for the first time and this is another reason that I don't like electric stoves. You can see where the heat circle was on that back piece of chicken. So as I'm cooking it, I try to arrange them so that all pieces of the chicken are getting the hot spots of the pan, which is a little frustrating sometimes, but it works. And to this chicken, I'm just adding a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm not putting any other special seasonings on there. I'm going to make some gravy to go with this, and then we'll have our, our fried chicken and our potatoes and some gravy and our salad. And it turned out to be a really nice dinner. So you can see here I'm, I'm trying to maneuver the chicken so that it's going to get on the hot spot of that pan and so the whole thing gets brown. The spreading actually on this chicken turned out so well. It stuck really well, and it just tastes delicious. And because I didn't do anything special with the breading in terms of flavoring, I can flavor it however I want to with my meal. So here I just put some flour in this jar and add a little bit of water, gave it a good shake, and added it to the oil that I still had in my cast iron skillet along with all the chicken breading coatings and, and all those yummy brown pieces. And I'm just going to stir it around. And I never measure when I make gravy. This is how I learned growing up. You just, this is what my mom did. I think this is what my grandma did. You just add things and mix it around until you like the way it looks and you like the way it tastes. So I'm just going to let that flour mixture cook in that oil just a little bit so that we don't have any there it looks like I've added a little more so we don't have any of that raw flour taste and that I just am adding milk and whisking it in until it gets smooth and then I'm just going to let that cook and thicken up and it turned out really really good so the potatoes are getting close to being done our gravy's almost done and as soon as 
all of that is finished, then we'll be able to go ahead and eat our dinner. So the potatoes must be done. I've just turned off that heat under them, but because it's an electric stove, it does stay hot for quite a while and, and finishes them cooking. And there I splashed gravy on my shorts. I know, what a shock. I should be wearing an apron, but I didn't think about it when I got started, and that's what happens. I end up wearing half of my food. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. And if I remember correctly, this was a couple of weeks ago, um, I think I added some more salt to my own plate. But it's hard to tell when you're making gravy, at least for me. I don't want it to be too salty. And so we just add a little more salt and or pepper to our own plates when we are ready to eat. And so this gravy is thickening up quite a bit. So I've had to add quite a bit of milk, which is good because then that gives us lots of gravy. We ended up putting it not only on our potatoes, but also on our chicken, and it was divine. Fried chicken and gravy is just one of my favorite things for obvious reasons. I don't eat it a whole lot because there's a lot of calories in there, but it's so good. It's worth it every once in a while. So I'm going to go ahead and do a taste test on the gravy. And it needs more salt. So, like I said, I always try to go on the smaller amount of salt, at least to begin with, because I don't want to over salt things. And it needs quite a bit more pepper. But like I said, it just it turned out so well. It's been a while since I made homemade gravy like this without following some sort of recipe. I did some at Christmas time for a sausage and biscuit gravy mix. Um, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. A sausage gravy for our biscuits, oh my gosh, um, for Christmas. And I followed the recipe then and I didn't like it quite as much. It was a little bit too salty for me. So I must be talking to my husband. He is off camera there. So I'm going to go ahead and just load up our plates with our potatoes and our um, chicken. And then we'll both be able to go ahead and eat dinner. So there's my plate. So we have the chicken, the potatoes, our salad. And then I also had some leftover, part of a leftover loaf of sourdough that we had along with it. And so it was a very delicious meal. And here, this I thought was appropriate. This is the harvest moon, the night that it was full. And um, since my, my channel is Harvest Moon Farm, I thought this was a very appropriate video. On this day, I was swapping my sheets out for my new set of the Brook Linen, uh, brushed linen or wash linen, I don't remember what they're called now, sheets. Um, I really love these sheets, and so I went ahead and bought a second set, and they just came in, and so I am putting those on my bed. On this day, I had gone to, actually I guess it was the day before, I had gone to pick up our pork that we 
bought from some friends of ours. We ordered a half a hog. And so I've gotten out a couple of our pork steaks. They're humongous, and they look delicious, and they were delicious. So I thawed a couple of these steaks, and I'm going to make them up with some of the homemade stuffing that we made, um, I believe, the day before. So I'm just getting these ready to go in my cast iron skillet. I added some oil, and then I also added just some butter just to give it a really good flavor. So once I get the butter in there, I'm just going to let the skillet heat up, let the butter melt so that it will be nice and hot when I put my pork steaks in. So I've got, I think it's a brown sugar, yes, it's a brown sugar um, meat um, rub or sprinkle or whatever, seasoning. And I really like this brown sugar one on our pork. It just always turns out really, really nicely. So I give each of those a good sprinkling of this seasoning, and then I'm going to put them into my skillet, which is almost not big enough for these two steaks because they're so big I had to squish them up quite a bit to get them both in there. But I am still waiting for my butter to get melted so that the pan will be ready for these steaks. Now that my butter is mostly melted and the oil and the pan are nice and hot, I'm going to go ahead and put my pork steaks in, season side down. And I can't remember if I season them a little bit more on top. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I must not have today. Anyway, I'm going to let those cook on that one side until they are looking browned. And then I'm going to flip them over. And again, same problems I always have with my... Um, stove being an electric stove so you can see that the center is browner than the edges and I know it looks burned in this picture or in this clip but it really isn't it's just so much darker than the rest they were really delicious so here I've taken some homemade kind of like a stovetop stuffing that I made and put in in the water you, I'm cooking it just like a regular stovetop you heat your water and butter add your stuffing and your seasons and just let it sit for about five minutes or so covered and then fluff it up. And I'll go ahead and link the video where I made that below. It was it was okay. The seasonings I think were not quite what I was expecting. Um so the next time I use it I am gonna do something different I think with the seasonings. But it was still good. It just wasn't what I expected. So here I am maneuvering these pork steaks around, trying to get them browned on all parts. And then I'm just going to go ahead. Look like that piece needed to be cooked a little bit longer. I think we ended up maybe putting these in the microwave for like 30 seconds because I couldn't get them totally done. They were getting so brown. And so we just stuck them in the microwave to just make sure that we didn't have any raw pork in the middle of our steaks. And so now on this day, I am making us some lunch. I've got one leftover loaf of sourdough that I've had in the refrigerator all wrapped up. So I'm going to use it to make us some grilled cheese. It's really... Um, it's really chilly on this day. I don't want to say cold, but a lot cooler than it has been. And so soup and sandwiches just sounded really good. So I'm cutting up this sourdough loaf, and I'm cutting the long slices and then cutting them in half just because I feel like it would be easier to cook them. And then here I have a can of condensed tomato soup. And I do have some homemade tomato soup, but I found this in my cabinet when I was cleaning things out and it just needs to get used. And I actually like this soup. I don't have a problem with it. Obviously, the homemade stuff is way better, but it's really not bad. And so I wanted to get it used. And so here I'm just starting on my sandwiches. I've got some butter over there. 
buttering the sides, throwing them in the pan, letting them cook, and then I've got some cheese. I've actually got a couple different chines of cheese, not what I would have liked to use. We had what my grandson calls the flat cheese, which is just American slices. And then I had a little bit of shredded, I think it was mozzarella, and I was just adding that just to kind of mix up the flavor a little bit. They were really good along with the soup. It was really a a really nice lunch to have on this chilly day, and we both really enjoyed it. up some more of our pork that we bought. So I've just got some pork chops and I am making the casserole that my mom made all the time when we were kids. So you can see in my baking dish there, I have some really thinly sliced potatoes. I just washed them. I didn't peel them. You can peel them certainly if you like, but I used a mandolin so that they were super thin and even slices and then I just laid them out in the bottom of that baking dish. And then I am cooking the, I'm browning the pork chops on both sides. I've added just a little bit of salt and pepper to them. And you don't need to worry about cooking them done because we're going to put this in the oven. We just want them browned well on each side. And then we're going to lay them over the top of our potatoes which I think I flipped these a few times to make sure they got nice and brown. And so once the pork chops are browned well on both sides, I lay them on top of the potatoes in our dish and I just put several pats of butter around the top of the meat and the potatoes. And again, this is another recipe that I just learned when I was growing up and so we never measured anything. We just we just did something until we thought it looked good. And then on top of the the rest of the dish then my mom always used milk and I typically use milk too, but I had some cream that I needed to get finished up, get used, and so I decided to give it a try, and oh my gosh, such a difference. It was so good, and I maybe had, I don't know, maybe a cup. I'm not sure how much was there, maybe a little more, but using the cream versus using milk made the kind of sauce that forms when you bake this just nice and thick and creamy and delicious. And so then I've got my oven preheated to 400. Oh, I am going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I intended to salt and pepper the potatoes before I put the meat on, and I forgot. So normally you would want to add salt and pepper underneath the meat since the meat's already salted. So I did this, and I don't remember if I said this. The oven is preheated to 400, and then... We're just going to put that in the oven once I'm done with the salt and pepper. And we're going to bake that about 40 minutes. And that is usually enough to finish cooking the the pork chops and to finish cooking and to cook the potatoes because they're 
sliced really thin. And look how beautiful that looks. And it was really, really good. So the one pork chop, as you can see, was huge. And then this other pork chop was normal size. So that is the one that I ate. And I gave Joe the other one. So I used that spoon and gave those potatoes a really good stir to just mix up that sauce and seasoning, the salt and pepper. And then I gave each of us a big spoon or two of those potatoes. I actually did not make anything else to go with our dinner this night. I didn't make any other vegetable. And it was fine. This ended up being more than enough for each of us to have for dinner. And I am so happy with this pork that we bought. It is so tender and so delicious. And the meal was amazing. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And otherwise, I will see you guys then on the next video. Bye, guys.